now we are going to go into a discussion on photopolymer plates. And the reason, there are other types of plates. There's, before there were photopolymer plates, there was a kind of natural rubber plate that we used. But it's, is anybody here using rubber plates? No, right? So that's why I left it out of the conversation. Rubber plates are an old phenomenon that I, I, I haven't seen in years. I don't know of anyone using it. So I'm not interested in talking about uh, rubber, rubber plates. Most people in Flexo that I'm aware of are using photopolymer plates. So that's what we're going to focus on, okay? Okay, photopolymer plates. <clears throat> what is it? It's a sheet of UV cured photosensitive polymer. Oh, okay. With raised images and properties conducive to flexible printing. And I made that up. <laughs> but it's 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 uh, it's like UV ink, but the but the unprocessed plate is relatively solid rather than in liquid form. But you have a very similar phenomenon in that when a photopolymer plate that is not in process is exposed to UV light, you have polymerization in those regions of the plate that have been exposed to the light. And by controlling the areas that have been exposed to light, we control the placement of the image and a variety of other properties. That's what we're going to go into. There are two major categories of photopolymer plate. And you've heard probably digital a lot. There are analog plates and there are digital plates. So we're going to start with analog plates. Um, basic, basic plate construction. First, I'll start with the center of the plate, the meat. That's the photopolymer portion. So we've got that part of the plate. Now, if all we have is a photopolymer sheet, just like the rubber plates in, of days of old, the plate is not what we call stable. You could take the sheet and distort it, and if you're mounting it, 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 it it's unmanageable just like rubber plates used to be, which is why we used to have to use special mounting equipment and actually draw on a drum that we were then able to see what precisely where we were twisting that plate to. Same thing would happen with photopolymer. So it needs some stability. So there's a backing, I call it. You can call it. Uh, the name doesn't matter. A rose by any, any other name would smell as sweet. So, but it's a back, back, it's a layer that is laminated to this photopolymer that is polyester. <coughs> you may hear the term also mylar, which just happens to be DuPont's proprietary name for polyester. Okay? But, so there's a stable, thin polyester. Uh, am I changing it accidentally? Yeah. There's a stable film. Okay. That's fine. Well, now, the plates are susceptible when they're in their raw state to compression, fingerprints, dust. So we want to protect that. So generally speaking, we will have a cover sheet. So that's the way the plates will be uh, packaged. You'll have the plate that comes in. Both sides will be kind of rigid. You, know, you won't feel the touch of the polymer. And then, so that that cover sheet can come easily off the photopolymer, sometimes there's a kind of, you know, little layer on there or something that helps you peel away that cover sheet. 
And I'm sure that not all plates are designed exactly the same way, but that is a very basic photopolymer plate construction. And with the cover sheet before it's been exposed. Okay, so it just keeps the sheet for storage. Now, with analog plates, we take that layer off. Sure, I stick to that. And we expose it. Now we need to control where we place the image on. And light exposure is what creates our image. So we'll have, in place of that cover sheet, in the processing equipment, there will be a film, a negative film. And it looks like your classic X-ray. Right, where you have dark and transparent. And let's say there was a transparent region right here. Underneath that film, the black portion is an emulsion. It's, uh, it's a thin film, that black film, and has silver in it, it makes it black. But it's a it's it's a also I believe a photopolymer emulsion. When the negative is processed, which we're not going into, uh, parts of the wh whatever part of the emulsion has been exposed stays, and what has not been exposed washes away in the process. So now, F, the bottom part here is is black. Here is clear. Here is black again. The whole top part is transparent. When light comes through, all of this is, is obscured from the light, and only this region here becomes exposed to light. Okay. Now, that film has properties that can be measured. Number one, how well does it obscure the light? Number two, how well does it permit light to go through it? So we're interested in how transparent the clear portion of the film is, how obstructive the dark portion of the film is, okay? And now negative films can vary in thickness. And I translated, uh, I think, uh, Imperial, I don't understand why my country still uses that method. I prefer the SI system and metric, but anyhow, I have to live with it. I was promised in the fourth, third grade that we were going to change it. I still haven't had it. And uh, so, forgive me if I'm a little bit wrong, but usually you have two film thicknesses. One being about 0.1 mm, and the other being about 0.1 mm. And, 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 and inches is uh, four thousandths and seven thousandths of an inch. And generally, a seven thousandths is used for offset, it's four thousandths is flexible. Uh, anyhow, that's not part of that. Now, the, the film will also have a high mat layer so that air can kind of uh, migrate and allow you to peel it off easily from the plate. Then that value of how transparent that clear film is is what we call D-min, density min. Right? And it should be less than or equal, or equal to, I should have said, and don't quote me on those numbers, but somewhere in the neighborhood of 0 0.05 using a device called a transmission densitometer. And there's a formula for that that is not important. If it's too high, if that, if the transparent portion of the film <laughs> is not less than or, or equal to the minimum number, it might obscure some of that light and not permit adequate penetration through it. It affects how much light can get through the clear portion of the film. So we have a target for how transparent that is. Too high, block light. The black portion of the film should have a minimal density. It may not be minimal, but in other words, it should. It's D max, or it's maximum D density. Uh, 
should not reach below a minimum. And that minimum being five. So it should be greater than or equal to five if those 0.05, 5.0 numbers are correct. Those numbers will probably vary slightly depending on your workflow and the materials you're using and wherever you are. But that's generally pretty, pretty close. If it's low, if this is not obstructing, it doesn't obstruct, obstruct enough, you might expose some of this region to light, or you might not have a nice crisp delineation between what has been exposed and what has not been exposed. It's not good. So it's important that we control those properties of the, uh, the film. Now, that emulsion side, that black side, goes against the surface of the plate. And the reason is, if we had the emulsion up here, light could come through and before traveling through the film, before it even reaches the plate, it can diffuse out. So whereas you were trying to get this part of it within here imaged, you've actually imaged, is what we call it, it's Expose the plate, the light beyond that part. Okay, so we put the emulsion against it in the direct contact with the surface of the plate. Now it's just got that's got it's just got that point. It can't diffuse that way. You know, it can't increase. If this were a dot, we would have dot gain. Okay, so emulsion against the surface of the plate. Now, in the motion side down, there's an orientation for the guys in pre-press. If it's down, and it's uh, right reading, it's fake print. And if it's uh, <laughs> down and wrong reading, it's reverse print. And I hope I didn't reverse that, but I think I'm right. And then films have their own quality control requirements also. So film is another thing in your workflow that you want to control. Digital. Uh, photopolymer plates are very similar to <laughs> analog photopolymer plates, but instead of having this, uh, this the negative film, in place of the negative, this the surface of the plate itself has had a mask applied to it integrated with that surface. It looks similar, but it's a black coating that is now on the surface of that plate. When it goes through, and then it has the cover sheet on that, when that black, when that mask goes through the digital uh, unit, imaging unit, rather than the there having been a film processed where regions were removed to expose the plate to light, the, a laser does what we call ablates. It ablates the, the portion, the, the areas that we want uh, to be clear. To ablate is just to, it's gone. Right? So what that does, I'm getting ahead of myself. You don't need a negative film, but there is now Whereas the film on top of that surface allows oxygen to have been there, and part of the process of exposing a plate is to evacuate as much of the oxygen as possible, because oxygen inhibits pol uh, polymerization. Yeah, but okay. You can, because you have variable oxygen or just oxygen present, uh, if this is where film now, a film negative with the transparent area, because there's oxygen present under that film, in the area that's being exposed, parts of that edge there are not being polymerized because oxygen inhibits polymerization. I hope I have that right, Dupont person. And of course, you can use the next one. Huh? The new one doesn't seem to use oxygen. All right, so.
having that mask integrated with the surface of the plate.